going into marriage, I think some people are in love with the idea of getting married, but not what it actually means to be married. So I think talking about those tough questions, like what would we do financially if we were broke or um, emotionally, medically? You know, uh, I mean, Brave Arts community, let's show some love to Layla and Javan Smith. How are y'all doing this evening? Hello. Hi. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Hey, thanks again for taking some time out of your day. I know y'all got kids and stuff going on. So I appreciate the time that y'all take out of the day for this segment, because I believe we're going to help some marriages today. We're going to get some inspiration uh, through your story. And just to let's start getting that positivity back into marriage, because I feel like, you know, it's kind of uh, dying off with today's culture. I could be wrong. I don't know. People say they still want to get married, but I don't know if they want to do the work. So this is why we have y'all on the show. Uh, let everyone know, uh, Javan, tell us about you and and then Layla, uh, tell me about you and what you do and all that other good stuff. Uh, well, oof, a lot of things, but uh, well, for the most part, I'm a barber, Cleveland. Um, Cut a lot of hair, talk to a lot of kids. Uh, for the most part, I guess you can call me the uh, local neighborhood. Unofficial sociologist. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. A um, lot, lot of uh, positive uh, uh, influences with a lot of uh, teenagers, I would say. Um, that's pretty much the, the start of it all. There's so much more, but I'm just going to keep it, keep it simple. <laughs> Yes, for sure. Layla to, and J Javan, I'm sure there's a lot of stories. I'm pretty sure that you talk to a lot of people. You probably yeah. are. Oh, the, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Probably the, the, the therapist. <laughs> yes. More than I do. And, and, and probably the kid guy at the barbershop, too. They tell me all the time, you definitely got a special place in heaven with the patience you got for these children. Patience of Joe. <laughs> I can't Amen take to that. <laughs> and so for me, I am an early childhood mental health therapist. So I work for an agency um, in Cleveland. So that's what I do. All right. All right. Now, how many kids? How many kids y'all have? How long y'all been married? We have Whew. three children. Three One kids. is a baby adult. She'll be 20 next month. Our middle child is, uh, he'll be 17 in December. And then our baby girl will be 12 on this Thursday. So yeah, she's making sure yeah. we remember too. Yeah, she's letting us know her plans. Mm -hmm. And then we've been married for, it will be 21 years, August 30th. Wow. <laughs> that is real life. Our son actually told us that's yeah. crazy. He said that it was, was crazy. his description. That's crazy. <laughs> Like, really? So I guess we're crazy. <laughs> crazy for being married to one person for that long, huh? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, that's so we can change that perception. What? It goes like that. It really does. It really does. I feel like we're probably just getting started. To be mm -hmm. honest. Yeah. 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 Like just yesterday, I took you to Popeye's Chicken, got number three. Oh my god! <laughs> you always talk about that Popeye's oh Chicken. Oh my god! Shoot, that was the place. <laughs> Hey, oh two one six, stand up. You know what he's talking about Shadow yeah. on the thirtieth. <laughs> hey, that's that Cleveland talk. Oh my gosh, <laughs> for sure. You know, we're just doing that whole Cleveland talk. There's people listening around the world. They're like, "What? What are they talking about?" <laughs> but anyway, I want to jump into yeah. the segment because I've been knowing you all forever. Y'all still look the same. Uh, <laughs> 20 something years ago. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. You know, I try to make sure I drink the right amount of ginger ale. <laughs> and you. water. Yes. Water, yes. right. Well, quick story. Uh, tell us how you met. And after that, how did you both know you were the right one for each other? So, whoever's going to get the most accurate story, we'll roll with that person. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually was like leaving a relationship and he expressed interest to his sister who was a co-worker of mine at the Cleveland State Bookstore. So that's where we started. And um my sister said, Can you bring my baby down 
to my job because everybody want to see him. <laughs> I used to watch him. I would third shift. I would bring him down. And I just so happened to see her. She didn't look at me at all. I didn't pay him any attention, Sean. She was looking at my nephew. Yeah, the whole time. But I just had to see. You know, like, remember that Dave Chappelle, Charlie Murphy talking about Rick James? Oh, the aura. aura right? Yeah, you know, I saw an aura. <laughs> Whatever. You know, you it did. was like a pink, purplish. Okay. <laughs> okay. That aura. <laughs> So I didn't pay him any attention. I was to the baby. <laughs> so I asked my sister, what's her, you know, let me, let me, your friend right there, let me, what's her number? You know, she yeah. gave her a number and you, I just called her and she asked the phone like she was like, hey, Jermaine, I'm like, whoa. You just she knew? told me you wanted to talk to me. <laughs> I said, okay. Yeah. It kind of went from there. Yeah. So yeah. fun fact, I actually proposed to Jermaine. Really? You know, People know that. She sped it up. Okay. Um, but I think, wh what would they say now? They check all the boxes or something. At that time, it was not a saying. But I just basically prayed for a certain type of spouse, and he met most of that. <laughs> so yeah. that was pretty much where yeah. I came in. Like 99%. Yeah. But he proposed to me after I proposed to him. I, I just felt I had to. You know, I just, grandpa was in my head. Just Okay. <laughs> So, yeah. so let's get. So I have a question. So Layla, you proposed first, and then Javan did it afterwards. Yeah, yeah. not many people know that about us. Yeah. Hey, you found this out on the Scary Terry yeah. Mary show. This is a world premiere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So y'all know now. Not everyone knows. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> oh, that would be so cool. Silly. Oh, oh man, you know. <laughs> Well, let me ask this real quick. So, how long was it before you proposed, Javan? After Layla, after Layla proposed, how long did it take you to do it? It was a year. A year? Yeah, about a year for me. Yeah. Yeah. But you, it only it didn't take long. I think we only courted for about a year and a half. Yeah. The courted. The people use that anymore. Courted. <laughs> Yeah, right. I guess we're dating ourselves, talking about courting. They're like, what? Yeah, yeah. Well, there was a transition period because um, I was saved initially at uh, like 17. Then I don't like these term backslide, but I just left the church I was attending <laughs> and just kind of was like, I'm done. And so when I started talking to Javan and we were dating, yeah. um, you know, I kind of just, it kind of led up to like, do you know Jesus as your personal savior yeah. sort of thing? Yeah. And he wanted to know more about Christ. And so it long story short, we went to a church that didn't work right. Then we, we did some counseling with another church and then we ended up going to the word church. And that was really where we got a lot of our underpinnings from our, our marriage and things. Mm -hmm. um, that's what got so connected with that's you. What we, <laughs> well, I'm, I knew Sean prior to you meeting Sean. <laughs> I've known Sean a few more years longer than you've known him. So I got to cut it. Sean, you, you know, I still got some of them tapes and CDs <laughs> from the tape ministry. Yes. So, <laughs> yes, the ministry we served on together, Sean. We all still um, have some of those. Talk about tapes, cassette tapes. Oh, we got to explain <laughs> that now. <laughs> a cassette tape. <laughs> a side A and side B. So that's right. But yeah, so that's pretty much how it came to be. Um, so yeah. when we when he found Christ, we courted for a, a time frame yeah. prior to getting married. Yeah. We, we courted in the traditional, whatever way you want to say it, the traditional way, mm -hmm. um, and then got married. So <laughs> that's how it got <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 Javan. Yeah, I've known Layla because you and Layla, sure. you, my sister, of course, y'all were in high school. Yeah, yeah, we were, we were like that. Yeah, yes. friends <laughs> in high school. Oh my god, since yeah. high school. Good time. Yeah, best Good friends time. in high school. So yes, yes. Good time. I wanted to ask a question because uh, Layla, I posted this on Facebook and you responded. So I wanted to discuss this. Uh, and of course, I do a lot of research about marriage and all the other good stuff because that's just what I do. And I'm trying to think of the site that I got it from. I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it says as more and more women surpass men financially and professionally, 
fewer young women see a need to get married. Let's talk about that. Hmm. I get that a lot too, um, because I have two master's degrees. And so, <laughs> um, so you my I, master now? So you my master now? I'm a double mm-hmm. master. What I'm <laughs> Let me stop. Go ahead. But although um, Devan has been by my side, and I credit a lot of my success yeah. and um, diligence. I mean, this man talked me off the ledge in undergrad. I wanted to walk away from everything. I was like, he's like, no, keep on. So he's yeah, always right. been my biggest cheerleader, my biggest fan. And I could not see myself being this, um, I guess, educated without the support of my spouse by my side. So mm-hmm. he is a barber. Most people know oh, a barber and two master's degrees. Like, how do you all, how are you all equally yoked? But I think because it came, we were together prior and we kind of grew together and we, we kind of had an understanding of what we wanted to achieve in our marriage, that it just worked that way. So I looked at marriage more so before I even obtained an undergrad, I was already committed to a marriage. Mm, I love that. I guess it depends on where you come in at. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That probably would be the best. I don't know. It's a loaded question. (laughs) Yeah. And that's good because there was a quote that says great marriages aren't found, they're built. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that you say, you know, because very few people in today's culture really don't like to go on that journey together. Right. You know. Yeah, you uh, Javan, <laughs> J- 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 what are your thoughts on, on that on that quote? I, I look at it as uh, you you kind of have to I guess be a little little, I guess, selfless. You know what I mean? To a certain extent, you know, selfless, uh, with a little bit of humility, just to uh, receive, receive somebody's, uh, you know, differences, and you know, see what fits. You know, I mean, it's just like a like a puzzle. You know, it's fifty pieces. There's a lot of pieces we gotta put together and see if we're gonna make this work. Yeah. Of course, somebody get tired, but somebody gotta be the one to keep it going. And you never know. You might get tired, but then that's the other person. That you know, you got to find that person that can, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I don't think that is impossible. It's very possible. You just got to, you know, sometimes let go mm-hmm. and let God. Yeah. Amen to that. So, so what is so what is your advice to those couples then, or not say couples, but what is your advice maybe to because now I'm starting to see. People that's watching the YouTube channel are ages 25 to 34 now. So I'm getting a younger demographic. Mm -hmm. So what is your advice to younger people who say, I need you to, to, I don't want to build a bear or I don't want to, I need somebody already established. Like, what is your advice to that person? Yeah, can we talk about this at breakfast? Yeah. Um, because, oh. you know, our oldest is is kind of almost in that age category, mm. believe it or not. I know we look so youthful. But um, <laughs> um, one of her friends made a comment during a cookout last week on our patio, like, oh, they can't go to that area because I don't want them going inside of there. Um, and, and me and my husband, we looked at each other. It's like, oh, I wonder if there's any, like, off, is like, it- any environments you yeah. can't go into. No. I guess we've been married for so long. We have that trust built and it's just that understanding of we would not disrespect each other by going into a scene that would be, mm-hmm. but we've never verbalized it. So yeah. but it was interesting that they were so young saying that mm. in a relationship. And so I thought like at breakfast, I thought going into marriage, I think some people are in love with the idea of getting married, but not what it actually means to be married. So I think talking about those tough questions like like what would we do financially if we were broke or um emotionally medically uh, i mean these are things that me and devan have have went through yeah. and if you had told us 22 23 years ago i was like oh no we i'm not doing that or i'm not and you know <laughs> the old people say you keep living long enough never say never is really just the the crust of posing those really hard questions prior to getting married I think couples counseling um, or premarital counseling 
is definitely something I would suggest. Yeah. Because it tackles definitely. a lot of those questions that you would not even from rearing an adult child, we had no clue what that comes with. Does it come like, with a manual? Oh my gosh. Like this is where the work really starts. Like I feel like we're just getting started, even though we're at year twenty one. Yeah. I feel like we're just getting to this thing. <laughs> So, I would say get it, get what was that informed decision? Informed decision. Informed decision. And counseling. There's nothing wrong with counseling. There's nothing Go wrong for it. with you it. Have you can have Jesus bias. and counseling. Trust me. <laughs> yes. You can have Jesus and therapy. It sound, is so doable. Sound counseling. Yes. Sometimes your homie around the corner just can't give you the right advice. <laughs> <laughs> he got seven baby mamas. What, what can he really, you know, tell you <laughs> that can help you? And I think there's purpose and pain. Like you can even get something from the seven baby daddy, um, seven baby mama droid dealer around the corner. I mean, you can take okay. it like chew the meat and spit out the bones sort of thing. Like you get what I'm saying? Like there is purpose and pain. And that's where I kind of take, we, and one of the questions that you posed to us, like we talked about different people who have a different frame of reference and what mm. we pick from each one of those relationships to kind of create this holistic mm-hmm. view of things. Um, what we feel like is a holistic marriage or a whole marriage. I don't know. No, I, I hear perfect it. <laughs> no, I hear you because you can you can learn a lot from from anybody. I mean, I know a lot of times it's easy for us to be like, I'm gonna listen to you and I and I get that. But some people like God can use anybody. You just never never know. You know, somebody they can they might not even apply it to their life, but they can tell you something. Oh, yeah. You'll be like, you know, how did he know that? Or how does she know that? Like, that's wisdom. Even though they don't apply it, it might work for you. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I agree. I will yeah. definitely agree with that. But yeah, you're asking those very hard questions that are very uh, getting uncomfortable is going to be the, the probably the best thing. Yeah, for. that's the big one. Getting uncomfortable. And I think it's probably what a lot of young people are afraid of. Getting uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. You know, they want that easy, just give it to me right away without and the work. Yeah. Let's just have it right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Communication is is failing. Communication has really got into a, it's almost a lost art. <laughs> Ask me. Isn't it funny how we all have phones, but no one is communicating? Yes. You see this all day, just. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here it is. We have the world in the palm of our hand. Literally. And and there's so many miserable people. Yeah. You know, but Probably because the human connection is taken away. One of my clients said this, uh, we were just talking about the advancement of technology. And um, he said, uh, uh, what do you think will happen if they'll start uh, creating robots to cut hair? He said, I don't think that's going to happen <laughs> for now. Reason why is because you take a robot and they cut your head, and they might not be able to feel the mistakes to fix it. So, you know what I mean? You got to have that spirit right there, you know? You got to so, have that human connection, I think, because that's where you want to kind of yeah. hold on to that. Because that's why most men are so committed to their barbers. You have men more committed to their barbers than a woman. Oh, I get it so, so much. <laughs> so, I mean. So much, yeah. It's a real relationship. That's a, that's a sacred relationship there. The barber. Definitely. That's a real relationship. You you leave a barber and you get a new one. It's it, yeah, it's like I can't believe it. Yeah, yeah, it's a real yeah, relationship. Yeah, well, I could tell one of my I could tell that he went to another barber <laughs> just by the you know, like, yeah, okay. Okay, that line is a little all right, yeah, yeah. So how how was it? <laughs> Are you gonna need me? Yeah. <laughs> so we can if we can cross that over and translate it into marriage. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Almost. I mean, you can almost use that as a frame of reference into marriage. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then they call you like, I'm you sorry. Cross over. You just wasn't available. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna stick it out with my barber. Yeah. 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 What? And Layla, I want to ask you this individually. Javan, I want to ask you this individually. And I ask this during every episode. Layla, what is the biggest mistake you see women make in relationships? Um, 
probably going to get me a lot of, uh, <laughs> Jack is not letting the man leave. <laughs> letting mm. my husband leave. And I know that is not easy to just say because it is definitely work in action. Like you have to work on that and letting, allowing him to be the head of the household. And people say he is the head of the household. He definitely is. And so um, even though financially there's a difference, but I definitely will take into consideration. Let me check with my husband. Now I have purchased some things. <laughs> <laughs> furniture <laughs> different things <laughs> but guess what i found is always come back to bite me when i do not include my husband into the yeah. decision making Double like of it. Told you yes. have got that couch. yes and then there's some times where he may not know and he has to go to somebody i go well you the leader lead us to some food always but we're home, lead us to a meal <laughs> so it comes with great responsibility but i am i am always okay to put that responsibility onto him and i think that's where someone that actually do fall short it is really hard because of today's society we've been talking you don't need a man i actually was raised my my parents told me that like you know you don't need to have a man baby get your education that was actually to tell you, you know what i said no i want to be a mommy and a child psychologist i said at the age of seven wow. so that was my yeah and that was my dream was to be a mommy and a child psychologist. So that was something that I was building on because anything else was just added supported details. But that was always my ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. So um, with that being said, like I'm okay with him having the responsibility of being the head of the household. I love that. Yeah. So don't come for us in the comment section. So <laughs> talk about this another time. This is another episode. So I, I, I feel you, Layla, because I think that's something that's lost by today's day. And that's a that's another episode within itself. So um, I'm going to shelf that because I feel you 100 uh, percent. OK, let me just say this real quick with Javan before I get into asking you the question, because I want to ask you, what do you think is the biggest mistake that men make? But I do want to say that because my wife makes more money than me, but she understands again like, like you're saying uh leadership and and submission and stuff like that and a lot of times people get so caught up on those terms that they are afraid to actually just live it exactly you know, just just live it just walk in it um and it's going to be something that y'all both have to mesh into and come together and make it work opposed to just because i make more money than you don't make me the head like so that's another show within itself. Anyway, Javan, what do you see the biggest mistake that men make in relationships? Um, oh, to actually add on what she said about uh, she wanted to be a counselor and my, mama and uh, wife and all. Actually, I wanted to be uh, a husband and a father when I was a kid. You know, the influences that I, things I saw, you know, especially my mom, how she raised all me and my siblings all by herself and the men that she dealt with. Um, it made me want to be uh, what they weren't and what I didn't have, you know, father, you know, I wanted to be a good man, a good husband, good father, you know, and so it's funny how all that just connected. I'm going to, I'm going to oh. I just want to add that to that because it was just like right there on me. Um, this it could be a lot of mistakes that men can make when it comes to what you say at breakfast. Because he's a barber, remember? He he has his thumb on the heartbeat Look, so, more than I do. I'm so, going to be honest. Sometimes it gets some wild stuff to come in the barbershop. <laughs> yeah, I was like, Look, man, I should have never, never, man, got that girl pregnant, man. <laughs> so I should never, ever opened up her legs. It, it, it gets oh crazy gosh, the stuff they yes, say. I'm yes, like, Man, what? Yes. They're like, Man, you just don't know, boy. You're just too much. I got to pay this, the child support, and I ain't never going to get out of this, you know. Aww. And it's it's sad. And of course, I'm like, man, it's all right. You're going to make it through. You know, I got to gotta be the positive, you know. Yeah. But, uh, I, you know, you, you can see where it starts. You know what I mean? So I think one of the biggest mistakes is, and it may sound funny, <laughs> but just saying it like it is, don't let the little head dominate the big head. That's just it. You know, make sure you get your mind together, you know, keep your 
your head straight, your priorities in line, so that you can't get caught up into a lot of mess. You know, um, I say it just for my life personally. Um, I made those decisions at a young age, and I didn't want to be like the rest, you know, which led to me, you know, being to where I'm at right now. You know, um, that's one of the biggest mistakes, in my opinion, is just just being out there without any type of, you know, guidance and control. Mm. Your mind, your big head. <laughs> I agree, because there's, and I, I talk about this a lot, that unfortunately, a lot of our young men are lovers before providers. Mm. So... Yeah, and I and I heard a uh, shout out to we talking about the word church, uh, Dr. Vernon. Mm-hmm. I heard him one day. He said he said he won't get on he won't get on bended knee, but he'll bend you over. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh, only Vernon, only Pastor oh Vernon. yeah, oh man. <laughs> oh, one of my other favorites is he may be all those things, but one thing he is is your choice. <laughs> You remember what he said? That? Your choice. <laughs> and I tell people that all the time. They may be all the things, but one thing they are is your choice. Yeah. You know, so do you want to make that informed decision prior to making it permanent? Do you know everything you need to know? And there is no way you're going to know. Like I said, there's things that presented in our marriage that we had no clue we would have walked through. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I'm just not saying that, oh, you just can't know every possible situation that's going to come before you but you want to get the gist of the thought and the philosophy of what it is because when it's presented you be like i didn't know you were thinking like that oh my gosh like that may be the breaks for someone or a deal breaker what's your deal breakers yeah you know yeah yeah and and i like what you said layla because you talked about you never really know in this totality like somebody you never you know it's it's like a faith walk, right? You have to be willing to to take that chance. But I do believe there are some core things in place. And I, I created a whole online course for that. And I'm like, I believe that there are some core things that you should have in place when you with this person potentially for the rest of your life. Um, but I think a lot of times women and men. We 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 check off more of the the physical things. You got to be six foot three. You got to have a six pack. You got to have this. You got to make six feet. He got instead of he got he got to have integrity. He got to be honest. You know, does he finish things that he start like these different things? So, I think that's I think that's a lot of reasons why people choose wrong because they choosing from their want list opposed to the value and cores list. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to ask you both this because this is a first and having couples on the show. Oh, really? Yes, this is the first time I've I've had a couple on. From seeing your uh, Layla, I'll start with you, ladies first. From seeing your parents' relationship, what did it teach you about marriage, Layla? Yeah, I wanted to be married. <laughs> I was raised by a single parent. Um, Who was I, the example? Yeah, but. I would say, yeah, we talk about this every as well. Um, my grandparents were the biggest example of what I wanted my marriage to look like. And I know we're in a different time, a generation, mm-hmm. so some of those things just can't be replicated or mirrored. But for the most part, I do mirror a lot of what I've seen in my grandparents' relationship. I think people have told us a million times we're the oldest, youngest couple. I don't know if that's a compliment or a dig. I'll take yeah, it either older. way. <laughs> It's all oldest, right. Oldest, youngest couple. The oldest, youngest couple you probably have meet. <laughs> That's yeah, funny. I, I've heard that a million times, but it's okay for me because it's what I, you know, felt was for me. And I walked the path that I wanted to walk. So that was what I saw in growing up. And I replicated what my grandparents did. And then I have some aunts and uncles who are in long term marriages that, um, so I just had like a culmination. I kind of picked from different people. And what I wanted to see, and then kind of created my own thing, or our own thing. <laughs> yeah, for sure. yeah, but I was raised by a single mom who's never been married. Okay. So, Javan, from seeing your parents' relationship, what did it teach you about marriage? Well, just just like Layla, I was raised by a single parent. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, 
I would say uh, a lot of guys that came and gone uh, that never really took my mom's hand in marriage. So I would say the example really came from what I saw on TV, which is typical, you know, the Cosbys, uh, you know, just, you know, black dads, all that stuff. Um, it was my cousin, you know, my big cousin. I don't know if I should put his name out there or anything, but um, he was a big influence uh, watching him and his wife, uh, how, how they managed things, how they got things started. I mean, I saw it from the beginning all the way until, and it just, you know, I was like, yeah, that's what I want. I want that. I want to be like that. You know, I like that mix, you know, and of course, experiences. You know, I mean, they say all oh, you all are a sum total of your uh, life experiences. Mm -hmm. So I even looked at uh, when I was in relationships before I even got, you know, like I got married. Um, I treat as if it was a marriage, even though we were just dating. I looked at it as if we're a relationship. I am going to take this serious. There is nobody else. You know, let's see where this goes. Um, and that's been all my life. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. That's a, I mean, that's a great trait to have because a lot of guys don't possess that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, I just seen a lot of it going, growing up, seeing how my mama was being treated, you know, since she, I was just like, look, I don't, you know, want, I don't want mine to go through that, you know want my kids to see mom and dad, you know, or at least have mom and dad. You know, but before that, I need my wife. <laughs> yeah. No, for sure. I'm going to ask you, Layla, is it, and it isn't, this is no trick question, but it's it's just what you believe. Is it easier to love yourself or someone else? <laughs> That's the one I said <laughs> was the lonely question. Yeah. Because I think, yeah, um, you do have to love yourself because me and the man talked about this a lot and you know um i think i'm more forgiving of him loving him than forgiving myself i'm very hard on myself and i he knows that about me mm -hmm. so um and i don't know where that comes from <laughs> but i i tend to love him more sometimes than i think i've loved myself in the past not now recently i've kind of um created some self-love and building on myself and creating because it does help within a relationship and if i don't love myself it's, it's hard to give that love like pouring yeah. from an empty cup so that's something that i've um done in the last few years and i've translated into our marriage because um i said this is like a rediscovery period when you've been with somebody for so long you forget details about them <laughs> and you know yeah. and i think like we're, we're reminded of things from our earlier years of beginning of our marriage, like, oh, yeah, we did used to like to go there. Oh, let's start that again. Or let's go there again. Or let's let's do these different things, because now that the kids are getting a little older, we're able to do more of our things together and build our marriage more as opposed to our 20s and early 30s was just all kids because we went right into having kids like it was like honeymoon yeah. baby. The three years later, another one, five years later, another one. Like it was like all of that. So I will yeah. say that during our first 10 to 15 years of marriage, it was a lot of pouring into the kids and figuring out mm -hmm. how to do this thing correctly. And now they're getting older and doing their own thing. And I mean, even Pastor Vernon would say the best thing the kids can see is us marinating in our love or them marinating in our love and going out on dates continue to date each other. That's the biggest thing that we had to relearn two years ago, like just redating and rediscovering our interests and passions of things that, mm -hmm. you know, when the kids, may the Lord be with me and thee, but we asking <laughs> one from mm -hmm. another. They fall out, cry, we'll be back. <laughs> so yes, I think loving yourself, is, is it can be hard, but it must be done and it must be learned. And um, yeah, I think that's one of the things that I've, that I've started doing. That self I hear you. What, what are your thoughts, Javan? Is it easier to love yourself or someone else? Uh, I say it's both, in my opinion. You know, how can you love somebody else if you don't really love yourself? You know, mm -hmm. um, if you put all your efforts and everything into another individual and they fail you, now, where does that leave your psyche now? 
You know, it's like, well, I really don't care about myself. Everything I have was in them. So don't tell them where your mind might carry you, you know. So it's best to have that for yourself. Keep, you, keep your sanity, you know. And it just, it, it, it makes sense in my opinion, you know. It, plus, I also think it's important um, to discover the five love languages. You know about book. the book, it's Gary book Chapman, five love languages, uh, but not just, you know, about the individual, you know, person that you're with, but yourself too. You know, learn what you love about yourself. Mm. And then go from there. Mm. I love it. That's good because even uh because y'all know y'all know this, <laughs> y'all knew me before I rebranded. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. uh yeah, right. Y'all knew me in my previous podcast. I thought you before you rebranded, rebranded. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yeah, right. I was my big brother. <laughs> hey, 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 my hey. big brother too. <laughs> hey, man, for sure. And this is something that, because as I'm listening to you, Javan, I had to think about when you're talking about love languages and just loving on yourself. Um, every quarter or maybe uh, every other month, I, I take my little solo occasion. And it's it's caused the big stir up on social media and people stripping out like, how do you get to spend a night or two, you know, or a night, what, 24 hours by yourself? No kids, no spouse. People say, well, how do you how, how do your wife get a solo location? Yeah, she want one. She can have one. But my wife not a loner by default like I am. So every every quarter or every other month or whatever, I just get away from the wife and the kids. I give me a hotel room for a night and I just chill. Whether if I watch TV or I, there's times I've recorded podcasts when I'm on my solo location, you know, but it just gives me my time to just be me. You know? Mm -hmm. Or I won't say be me. It's like I'm putting it up front, but just kind of more of like just me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's very valuable to have. Um, we haven't done it. With, you know what? The solo location came when he was in the army. When I was in the military. <sighs> that was like six, seven months. Being army reservist is almost like I had to do that every month. Yeah. You know, yeah. once a month, four weekend, and sometimes doing annual training, it was two weeks, maybe three. Um, but that was my, I kind of used it as a, a way to escape a little bit, even though I was working. I was kind of like away from the family for a little bit. And it was it was kind of cool. It was, you know, I, brotherhood, relationship with my homies, you know, we was able to, you know, see some things. And uh, it felt good coming back home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it felt good coming back home. Every time I was like, man, I'm so tired of looking at y'all. I'm ready to go back. That's what makes the heart grow <laughs> That's true. That is very true. A lot of times people get married and they're like, we Bonnie and Clyde, it's me and you against the world. It's like, you know what? You you deserve some space and give you the Heisman. You know what I'm saying? Take it, you take a little space. Go I, ahead. Oh, yeah. oh, you just hit me. Pastor yeah. Vernon, man. Oh, he just been such a he said, I love chocolate chip cookies, but I don't want them every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want them every day, you know, if you got them. Maybe you gotta mix it up. Put some yeah. macadamia nuts in there or something, or some peanut butter. <laughs> you know? Yeah, this sure. <laughs> He did. But like um, I life. heard a pastor say that came and visited the World Church in 2009. I still listen to the CD. We talking about CDs, guys. <laughs> um, Kevin Adams. He said, um, oh. it begins with oh. you having a good time with you. Basically, people treat you like you treat yourself. Mm -hmm. And so with that, like we have our marriage identity, but I'm an only child. My husband's the oldest of five. Mm. You know what I mean? And we were both raised by single parents, but they have two different philosophies as well. So yeah. we come from so we come from two different backgrounds. And so I am a loner by nature. Like I he knows I need I need to go shopping. I need to do the yeah. things I need to do by myself. And it took time to figure that out. Yeah, and he didn't <laughs> actually know that. But sometimes when you're when when you get that need met, you no longer need it as well. So like the solo location that you have, you may do that for the next year. So then you're like, well, I don't need one. Like you may go, you may go a time frame without it. You know what I mean? Just because you, that need has been met and it's been filled. So 
it just depends on whatever your need is, like the spouse being able to read that. Like we, we basically are in tune with each other. We can look at each other, but oh, yeah, you need some help. Just go, I'll cook dinner. Or whatever, we're just reading each other's cues. Mm, for sure. Just, no, I, I love it. Before I let you all go, I have one more question to ask. This is the bonus question. Okay, so Layla, start with you first. <laughs> Which is the hardest for you to say? Is it A, I apologize, B, I need help, C, I love you, or D, I was wrong? Which is the hardest for you to say? Um, I think, uh, let's see. I think it's I need help. I need help? Yeah. And, and why is that hard for you to say? Um, because again, like I try to mirror this, like, um, housekeeper or domestic engineer, whatever they're calling it these days. <laughs> Sometimes things just kind of overwhelm me. And instead of me just asking for, oh, I'll just do it. Because sometimes we know it takes more work to tell somebody how to do something than to yes. actually, you know what I mean, than us doing it, especially with the kids. So I think with, with, the, um, with my husband, I have learned to be more, more uh, proactive with saying, I need to do X, Y, and Z. Do you think you can help with this? And he'll say, get one of the kids or, you know, so he kind of gives me some guidance on how to get that. Me, So I'm not walking the floor hard. He says I walk hard when I'm upset. <laughs> he'll actually ask if that's something I need help with. And then I've been more proactive with asking him to assist with me. Mm -hmm. From putting the clothes in the dryer to cutting the food down or cutting the food off. Any of those things have always kind of been a little difficult for me to delegate, but I am now learning that I do need to reach out more. I agree. Why? Real quick, why? Because I took a poll on Instagram asking this very question. And when the the number one answer was, I need help. That most people struggle with saying I need help. Number one reason. Now I think it's vulnerability. That's what I was gonna ask. But this is your spouse though, right? So fun fact, when we first got married, because my grandmother was retired, and so you gotta remember where I came in, I saw my grandparents in a row of they were retired and being married. So yeah. that looks different than working, two people working mm -hmm. and being married, okay? So I had to learn that. So in my head, when I first got married, I thought that the house should smell like food and pine saw. So before he would get off, I would quickly wipe the runner. We used to have this plastic runner on our <laughs> carpet in our first apartment. And I would wipe that down with pine saw and then I would have a meal cooking because that's what I wanted him to come in. <laughs> <laughs> you remember? Oh, I remember like yesterday. And so yeah. I, in my head, that was an image of me being this good wife. And I always wanted to have this presentation and I never wanted him to see me any other way. And of course, you know, that's not realistic, right? No. You, you can't keep that up for, for the rest and, of and, our days. And what I saw, it didn't bother yeah. me whether you did it or not. No, we didn't know that. Yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> well, Lisa, I did. Mm -hmm. And we didn't communicate that, too. Because yeah. he could have came in and said, why does I always throw my pencil? <laughs> you know what? Oh, you know, and I'm I like, well, just, thank that's God. what it's supposed to be. Thank God she like to keep a clean house. So, I mean, you know, we were we were misreading each other's cues. That's what happens. Yeah. We were misreading each other's cues. And time. that's our art. It takes this. It, it yeah. takes work to read cues and signals mm -hmm. clearly. Yeah. And to meet those needs, because sometimes and, and I'm not going to bomb on the ladies. I'm just saying, you know, ladies, a lot of times be thinking that we're supposed to be mind readers. Ooh. And we're like, Ooh, Lord. I didn't know. You know, we we be like, she be like, how do you mean? What you mean? You didn't know. You're supposed to read my mind. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. like this uh, X-Men, Cyclops and yeah. Jean Grey. Yeah. Like, he I can't read your mind. Not I'm not an X-Man. He honestly did not know a lot of things that I thought he knew. Yeah. And it was until we had a discussion on a lot of things that he was like, I just really didn't know. You can live with somebody all your life and not know. 
<laughs> we've known each other 23 years. Yep. And we just didn't know some things. Yep. As I said, we're in a rediscovery period right now. Yep. <laughs> we yeah. love many things. Yeah, yeah the, the, thing, the thing with marriage is, the, the beauty in marriage is you rediscover your spouse over and over again. Yeah. Yeah, because the Layla three years ago uh -huh. was not the same Layla when y'all first met, you know? So. Right, right, and vice versa. Yeah. I definitely wasn't the same either. So. I mean, we were 19 and 22. <laughs> wow. So okay. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Sorry, Matt. I know. <laughs> what? Oh, you can tell my age all day. I embrace like it. Old lady. Yeah, I embrace it. I be telling when I talk about you at the bar. He's talking about he says my old lady. I said, "What are you calling me?" I ain't no old lady. <laughs> well, Sally, ain't really thinking like that. This is what that's what I saw. That's what I saw growing up. That's what he saw growing up. Yeah, you know, on TV. <laughs> he called me his old lady. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's what you say when you say to me that's your heart <laughs> before we get out of here because I got to ask Javan the same question which is the hardest for you to say is it I, I apologize I need help I love you or I was wrong probably I need help you know because you know, most men tend to like pride themselves on being able to solve problems take care of business do things on their own you know like you that's like if you, you know, somebody came and told you like, hey, you know, man, I see you're having a hard time. You know, why don't you, let's roll somewhere. Let's go somewhere, man. You know, uh, go out drinking or something like that or kicking it or, you know, we can go shopping. I buy all the clothes. Yeah. No, man, you ain't about to buy my clothes. <laughs> no, you know, it's just, I think that's the hardest, hardest part right there is to uh, not, you know, you know, ask for help, ask for help. I. You know, I still struggle with that every now and then, you know, but as I get older, I'm learning. I'm learning more and more how to, you know what? I don't think I can fix this. Let me go ahead and call somebody that can do it, yeah. you know, before I make the situation worse, you know, yeah. uh, like plumbing or trying to work on the car. You know, mm -hmm. I want to spend a little money, you know, I'm getting these brakes fixed. Let me YouTube and fix it myself. <laughs> Oh no, we messed it up. Now I gotta call somebody. Yeah. So <laughs> some things are non-negotiable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's it right there. Everything mm -hmm. else I'm pretty much easy. I can say I love you a hundred times a day. Well we make sure we tell each other each night. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Even Maybe. when we're mad. Even when we're angry. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, heated fellowship. Heated fellowship. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanna thank you both. For taking some time out of your day to be a guest on today's show because I wanted this to be something special and to be able to connect with married couples who've been in the game for a while and marriage does work if you're willing to do the work so I want to thank you both for taking some time out of your day to be a guest on today's show hey Brave Arts community make sure that you hit the subscribe button share this with a friend if you are listening to this via podcast, make sure you leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts by doing so. It leaves you in a drawing for a free Amazon gift card who doesn't like free things. Thank you, Layla and Javan, once again for being guests on today's show. I pray that uh, this segment will help someone and to rediscover love again, you know, and to know that marriage does work because you both are a living testimony. Uh, I know you personally, so the world will get to know you as well. So I definitely want to just thank you both for taking some time to be a guest on today's show. Thank you awesome. for having us. Awesome. Yeah. No. Say I love you every day. <laughs> Three kisses every night. Try that. <laughs> That's a good way. Yeah, we do Even that. when you're mad. Try that. Oh, yeah. Hey, <laughs> words of wisdom. 21 years. Y'all better start kissing. <laughs> <laughs> Brush your teeth. <laughs> Brush your teeth. Yeah. Yeah, brush your tongue too <laughs> great parts community <laughs> thanks yeah. again for listening um, make sure you share this with a friend someone who might be struggling in their marriage thanks again Leila and Javan I will talk to you soon Brave Hearts community we have more guests coming tomorrow so make sure that you watch or listen via podcast well I gotta do it because I keep seeing it in the background it will come up forever <laughs> For those who watching via video. <laughs> All day.
all day. <laughs> Take care, people. Hey, thanks again for watching another segment of It's Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarry, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here. But anyway, go watch another video. Thank you.